Okay. <laughs> How do we start this thing? Now, what's the everybody? Baruch Hashem, I'm, uh, I'm ha- very happy to be here at Shemlav Malka. And uh, you talked about the, the most astonishing Shemlav Malka I had in the times of, uh, in the years I was in a place called prison, was actually in, a, in the, um, the, the second, the, the Shabbos, right after they threw me into, into jail, after, the, after the, um, what they call the trial. Um, they, they, brought, they brought food to eat, and the food wasn't kosher, so obviously I couldn't eat it, and that was Friday. And um, so I couldn't eat it on Friday, and I couldn't eat Shabbos. And by, I guess by Shabbos afternoon, somebody there figured out that, uh, that I need to eat. So they came over to me, they wanted to know why I'm not eating. So I said, uh, you didn't bring me the kosher food. So they... they um, they did something very out of the ordinary in that they asked me, so we, what could we buy for you? And personally, they went, they went to the supermarket, and I guess that there would be a, uh, maybe a kosher aisle there or something, so the Barsham there was, they, they bought, I think, matzah, man, I guess it was matzah, and they brought, um, I don't know, whatever other foods they had, they brought also grape juice, I was able to make dollar, and I had a bath malka, and uh, Bar Hashem, I didn't miss that one either. And it's amazing, Taka, throughout all the years, like she said, um, thank you, Mrs. Uh, Lipska, for inviting us here. Hopefully we can share some, some words of ins- inspiration. And th- this is one of the moments when, you, when you're doing something, you're serving the Ebrish there, and you, never, you, know, you know the Ebrish is happy what you're doing, and suddenly you're in a situation where it can go two ways, and you stay strong with the moon that Hashem is with you, and then you see Hashem makes it possible for you to do the mitzvah, and then suddenly you see that Hashem is really not only with you, but is actually happy with what you're doing. And it was that Nav Malka, obviously. It was other times also that I felt that tremendous, besides having food after two days, was a, was a welcome thing to have a halal. But, um, but it was definitely a, a, a way to start with that feeling that Hashem is with me. When I, we, was, we were in post we made a big Malaka, we were Matar Shabbos, we had a little yeshiva over there. I don't know, maybe some, you know, some people that were there, we used to, the Bachim used to come over, the, and also the Shachtim. So, Marx, I want to share, before we start this evening, I want to share two, two short stories, which will fit a little bit into the, well, what we're going to try to speak about tonight. Um, one of the stories that we, we shared very often around our Malav market table, starting with uh, Oliver Shalom, my father, was uh, a very short, brief story. So, you knew, when you knew you weren't, didn't have a lot of time for stories, this was a story to say. But it had a lot, of, a lot of punch to it. The Basham Tev, the story was actually repeated by the Rebbe. So you know, it's a true story. And the Rebbe once said over that the Basham Tev won much of Shabbos. It was after Shabbos, so all, this, all him and all his Hamidim were in Shabbos that could close. So they didn't have any money in the pockets. And the Basham Tev asked his Hamidim to put their hands in the pocket and take up money to buy food for Malav Malka. And the Hamidim didn't waver. The Rebbe said to put their hands in the pocket and take up money, so they put their hands in the pocket and the betochen that what the Rebbe says will happen, will happen, they, they took money out of the pocket and they were able to make a love malka. And the, obviously the story is that this, this is the power of Amuna, the power of betochen, that, that when you do what the Ebishter wants, if you do understand how the money got there, don't understand the money got there, but it's an amazing thing. You, 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 you do what the Ebishter wants and the, and the money came that's, that's a story that many times actually, how short a story is, but how powerful it is, is that betochen means that when, you do, when you're doing something and you know the Ebishto wants you to do that, the Ebishto wants to make a lot of market, you need the money. So you put, so you, there, and, the, and, the, and the Hashem Tev, the Rebbe tells you, put your, put your hands in your pocket and do it, and so you don't just say, ha, come on, be real. This is reality, this is a reality for a Yid. And you put, if you put your hands in the pocket with, with, with the intent, not as just being Yates, but taking out the money, and the Abish puts the money there for you to take out. The second story is actually explains the first story. The Basham Tev had many Talmidim, and the Talmidim once asked him, they want, a few of the Talmidim asked him, they want to have Gilu Yeloyo. They want to have the Schus to see Eliyahu Novi. So he told them that the uh, Menashemayim got permission, and he told them where El Yohanavi is, and he gave him directions. He said, if, if you go right now, he's, El Yohanavi sometimes comes, uh, appears as a, as a poor person, sometimes appears as, as a, a rich person. He says, right now, he's in front of this amazing palace 
a, a, a very wealthy estate. In front of the estate, you'll see many carriages. If you go there, you see many carriages in front, like very fancy carriages, uh, two horsepower and four horsepower. Very, and and the fifth carriage, you'll see a man sitting inside, and this is it looks like a nobleman, but he's really a leonda. We go over to him and greet him. They were excited. They gave the coats, the hats. They ran. They re they went to this place with the to describe them, and sure enough, there was a big palace there, a big very big mansion. In front of the mansion, there was. Many, many of these carriages that Vashem was, was describing is exactly how the Vashem described it. So if they counted one, two, three, four, five. They ran over to the fifth carriage. Sure enough, there's one person sitting in there. And they were sure to say, Elyonavi, so they greet him. And they ask Elyonavi to, that, uh, that Habib the Vashem and they want to speak to him a learning. But instead of greeting them back with a nice greeting, Vashem with words of, um, like, uh, of derision, how they say it in English, like a, like a Russian peasant. It gives, it gives him as a... Get out, of my, get out of my way, you Jews. And, and he tells his driver to pull away, and he drives away. And they, was, they, were, just, they were really of trouble. Why wouldn't they, they were sure it was the Navi, but why wouldn't he want to speak to them? How come he, he actually spoke to them very roughly? He spoke to them like a goy. Why did he speak to them like that? They couldn't have come back to Hashem and said, why, we was able to see him, but why did he pull away? Why didn't he want to talk to us? So Hashem asked them, tell me, when you met him, which language do you speak? He spoke in Yiddish or in Russian? And this, I think, is, it brings out the whole story. So the Chapsech, they, they, they saw, they were sitting in front of a palace, they saw all the wealth and the, and the, of the Russian, uh, Russian uh, um, wealth, whatever they had over there, and, and, they, and the guy sitting inside with the Russian, with the Russian hat, the Russian clothes. So they, they, they geared into Russian, and they greeted him in Russian. So he says, so what do you want? You spoke to him like a goy, he answered you like a goy. If you would have spoke to him like a Yid, in Yiddish, he would have answered you like a yid. This, I read the story as a young, a young man. I was told the story of Moses Chachome, but this is the story. If, if the eight, Barsha, my whole life, I tried to be, speak in Yiddish. Now, I don't mean the language Yiddish. I mean speak like a yid. Think like a yid. Speak like a yid. Act like a yid. Address the world in Yiddish, and the world will respond to you like a yid. Address the world in Goyish. Nothing wrong with speaking English, nothing wrong with speaking Russian. We're speaking, we're speaking English right now. But if you address the word, in, in, not the language English, but you're speaking in, in terms of Goyish, like a Goy would talk, if you and a Goy would say the same thing, then the Goy, the world answers you back the same way. And this is what something that, that we, we, we want to try tonight. Um, together with my son, Getzel, he, did, he took the story, he wrote it down, Bar Hashem, and... Um, so uh, obviously I'll hear from him a lot also, but uh, so you have over here, I, he says always I had the harder part of the story. I had to go through the story, he only had to write it. And, um, but this in the Kuda is, is that you go through life and you, and you, come, you encounter many things. And everything you encounter, there's a Lelio Hanovi. We look to this. It's not far-fetched for us to understand. There's a total Kudush in everything we address. We address a situation, we address our children. There's a little Neshama there, there's a little Hanovi in there. We talk to him like a yid, the kid will respond to you like a yid. Talk to him like a goy, he'll answer you back like a goy also. So this is what we'll try to do tonight. A good work, everybody, and uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's nice to start off with stories. And um, um, I had this chus to write this story of uh, my father's experiences. And it gave me uh, the opportunity to think about the nature of stories. Um, and why we tell so many stories. The stories are a big part of Dark Echsidis. Of course, they're part of uh, uh, Torah. We have Vigata Levincha. We tell the story of, of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. We're now learning in, in, in the Parsha. But especially in, in, our, in, our, uh, uh, you know, in our circles, in by Chassidim, Stories are a big are a big part of our of our derech. and Malav Malka we tell stories by Fabrengans we tell stories. It's always about stories. And um, I was in Baruch Hashem. The, the book was very well received, and uh, people are people are um, it's resonating with people. And uh, I, was I, in, I just want to say one thing: Getzler Abashkin never went to English. <laughs> I don't know if you know. I forgot. So, so if you like his English language, he speaks Yiddish, really. <laughs> okay. So, 
uh, I was I was in Lakewood. My father moved in, and they gave him a shlichus in that area of the world. And he's uh, helping, uh, he's sharing the the art of Taira and the way to to live Taira. And so I was there for Yom Tif and I and I went into a store in Lakewood, and a uh, a guy uh, tapped me on the shoulder. He said, "Yeah, for the book." He says, "Mamish, it's like a muster safer." Which so I said to him, "It's I, I appreciate the sentiment, but it's not a muster safer; it's a story." Be, no, I understand. It for sure, it was a compliment. But I, 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 there's there's something fundamental, fundamentally important about a story, and uh, it, it's very important to, to especially tonight when we're sitting. You're, you're here celebrating such a special organization. It's important to understand the nature of a story. I know you, he took it. He meant it as a compliment, and I and I he didn't. I, I didn't uh, disrespect that. But I we had a story is. is a moment when something came to life, something real. We know the Torah is true. And we study Torah, we learn Torah, a lot of, our, a lot of uh, your activities are revolving around Shurim. But that's something that speaks to the mind, and something that's in, in higher elements, it's an abstract, it's an abstract concept. The, the thing that really brings a theory home brings a, a, a observation and insight home is an experiment. When you when you have a theory and you develop the theory and you explain the theory, it's all very nice. But what really seals the deal is is, is when you try it in real life and it works. That's that's when it's that's what matters. That's that's when it, that's when it's true. That's when that's when it's true to you. And that's that's what a story is. We 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 need, we have svarim and we need svarim, but we also need stories. That's why I was I was uh, I was gratif gratified that Baruch Hashem I was able to write the story as a story, and uh, and people take it as a story. That's the part that it, it's not a it's not about ideas and theories and philosophies. This is the way the world works. Sometimes we think about Torah uh, 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 as an academic thing. We have to study. It's in the books, but really it's 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 a book. It's like a it's like a, a textbook, a physics book that describes the world that we live in. It's not a it's not a theory to apply to the world. It's describing the world the way it really is, and that's and that's something that is especially precious, especially relevant uh, uh, to to this organization that you're celebrating tonight, because it's from from what I what I know about it. It's more than just shiurim. It's a community, and when you when you have a a, um, a community. Gives us something in our avodas Hashem that we can't have on our own. Chassidim were always far bringing about around a uh, yom tif, a yemid pagra, even just just for inspiration. But if 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 the relationship with the Ebrister is a personal thing, why would it be helpful for other people to be involved? If it's all, all about your heart and your mind, what is it about community? What's the what's what is that community that 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 we we can't have on our own? And um, the answer is that it's not about chachma, it's not about bina, it's not about insight and understanding. What we're, what we're trying to achieve is we're trying to open our heart. We're trying to recognize that the reality that we see around us is misleading. Like my father was saying, the, the, the world is, it looks like it works, it runs in English. The world runs in, 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 physical, in, in physical terms, in, in, in cause and effect. If you're strong, you'll be victorious. If you're fast, you'll be victorious. If, you, if, you, you know, if, if you're smart, these are the things that will determine the outcome. But that's not the real world. That's not the world that we live in. And we have to somehow escape that illusion and inhabit a different reality. And Torah does that for us. But what, what, what bridges the gap between the Sefer, whether it's Musr or Chassidus or whatever Sefer that's giving us good ideas, and what bridges that gap to reality is community, is, is real life, is, is, is seeing it all come to life and... and, and, and and, and, and that is something that, 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 that we do help each other. When you're, when we're, if, if we're trying to escape the reality, if we're sitting next to another person that also agrees and recognizes the, that the truth of, of Torah, that definitely contributes to our ability 
to, to escape the, the illusion ourselves. And that's why um, Hashem should, uh, you know, it's a privilege and honor to be here to celebrate uh, this milestone with you and uh, let's take a moment to uh, bench, to, to give a bracha, that I've encouraged us to bench each other, to give you a bracha, to continue with your, with your organization. And um, a bracha is, uh, uh, the Rebbe says, that a bracha, Helps when you when you when you plow and you plant, and the rain comes. It helps. So we should, you know, whoever can, whoever can and should uh, be part of making this happen, should uh, should do so. And 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 the bracha should should be chal because this is really this is really the key. The key to being free of the world around us is uh, the ingredients like uh, is the clarity of Torah. But what what but what really this is the secret ingredient. What really makes the difference between uh, 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 a theory and academic and, and 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 real life is 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 living and we live with other people we live around other people and um, but we have to come back to Torah that's the 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 the, the heading on the on the tonight's event is shackled in body and and free in spirit I want to talk more about the the free in spirit part and <laughs> and uh, she hates to give it the shackled in body the um, I just, I might say, how you can go through an Indian life, a, a terrible disappointment, you're waiting for something to happen, a little bit you have is taken away from you suddenly, and um, and how you, by t- looking in the direction of Taylor, you your mamish can change it over to become a beacon of light. I'll tell you a quick, a quick story over here with, with Sukkis. In Sukkis, there was a... Um, they, they, they made well, the place called prison. They made, they allowed to have a, uh, a sukkah. This I think was the third year, and they were, we were waiting for a response from the from the from the Supreme Court. They're going to hear the, they're going to hear the case, and a lot of people weighed in. They should hear the case, and uh, and uh, I got the idea. We got notified, in the middle of sukkahs that they're not hearing the case, and I kept Baruch Hashem, they wish to kept me strong with the idea that it's not them that's going to decide if I'm in jail or not, the Abish is going to do it. I'm doing my, I'm making a keli, I'm doing my shtadlis. But ultimately, it's the Abish who's going to do, with, do it for me. So I have to invite now the mitzvah and I'll simcha. So the little simcha I had was coming up with simcha stater. And um, I was looking forward to going to the sukkah. There was a few yudin there that year. We had a chef we had like six, seven yudin that, that over there. And I was hoping to go in and have a stickle tensel. But um, Mamish before Sukkot, I usually didn't have time to look at all these pamphlets. I, I, I read a, 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 one of these pamphlets that came in, and um, they, they, they brought a beautiful story from the Rebbe in, in the early years. I don't know if it was before, before Yitzvah or after Yitzvah. It, it was in 770, and there was Simcha Steda, and the Rebbe was dancing very, very strongly. And there was an American Jew, Ayid, standing on the side, and the Rebbe pulled him into the, into the dancing and danced with him. And the way the Rebbe can dance was with a chayas. And this, and this year was a little bit uh, shook up because I don't, I don't think he ever have, have, have danced like that in his life. So after he finished, the, the, he, the Rebbe says to him, I hope you don't mind that um, I, I pulled you into dance, but it's, uh, you're okay with it. So the Yid says to the Rebbe, Rabbi, it was a tremendous honor to dance with you. So the Rebbe corrected him and says to him, on uh, Simcha Steira, you dance with the Eibushter. Like you, you know, we weren't dancing with anybody. On Simcha Steira, you dance with the Eibushter. It's a small story. I read it and I thought to myself, I'm, if, if I'm going to be in a place called prison, how am I going to dance? I'm dance with the Eibushter. You don't have to be dafka in the big shul. You don't have to be dancing with somebody else. This was the lesson I got from the story. And the, the way the, the way it turned out is that that Simcha Steira, you went to the sukkah. That's where they gave us place to dance. And it's amazing how a direction from Taylor not only shows you, you know, I always say, everybody talks about Taylor being the tools, Taylor giving you tools in life. Saying that may be true or not, but it's much deeper. Taylor does not give you tools, a tool is external to you. Taylor gives you the koyach, Taylor gives you the energy, Taylor shows you who you are and brings out the koyach you have. Not only a tool is, if you have, you, you have a situation in life, you now you need the koyach, you need the, how to go through it in the right way, and maybe simcha, and to go through it and turn darkness into light, so I'm going to tell, tell you, teach you, I'll give you a tool how to do it. It's much more than that. Taylor is the koyach that gives you the, not only the shows you the way with light, that gives you the koyach. So here it was, I walked into the sukkah with a few of these in there, 
And David Shtar helps, it starts raining. Can you imagine of all times, <laughs> of all times it rains, punked when I have to go to the circle. I'm trying to have a safe potato to have a little bit of simcha. I'm not in 770. This is three years in. I can very, very clearly remember simcha status outside. And mid time, not, not only I can't, boom. So all the guys did a little rain. You can't be a sukkah. They ran away with the safe potato. I sat over there and said, I don't want to leave. I just didn't want to leave. Because <laughs> you're going into, you're going into a building called the, uh, Called a unit, whatever. It's a barrack full of full of uh, uh, people that are not simcha state dick, and the whole atmosphere there is obviously not holy and, and anything. And I didn't. I wanted to stay in the sukkah, and I was looking for. And then it hit me the story: simcha state you dance with Eibushda. And I mustered the kayach, and I, I had to think a, a, either a siddur or a chitz. I don't know what I had, but I had a sefer with me. It's all I had, and I started dancing. I started going around the table. And it was, um, it was raining, it was remember raining, it got very wet, and the, the, the floor got muddy, and I was slipping. So the first hakofa, so I was the guy giving out hakofa, so I was the guy deciding the names of the, of the song of the hakofa, so I was a levitic over there. And so the first one, we yeah, all have Yitzhahara, right? So much what are you doing? He makes a narish, come on, get real. I said, no, I'm going to dance, I'm dancing with the Ebishan now. So you dance, the first one's a little bit awkward, I'm talking. the second one I got into it, but the third hakofa, I can tell you, I was it, I was flying high. And it's not, this is not a, piece, a tool, this was real. This is mamish real, because I just had to break through the, the veil of, of English, of, of, of the Goyish, look at it, and the Tzuchah stated, the Rebbe says, you dance with Ebesh, that's true. I didn't have anybody else to dance with, but Ebesh is always with me. I'm not alone. And it's not something you read in the storybook, this is for real. So let me live it. I lived it. See, I caught for one, I had, let's say, 30, 40 minutes, I made a chashm, I have seven times five, Ma- that much math I do know. It's 35, I had five minutes of kofa. And, uh, so I, I made a kofa, seven of kofa. By the time I was seven of kofa, physically I looked like uh, wet and, and, the, and the mud it was, 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 was splitting all over, all over my pants. So my pants, I was like halfway full of mud, uh, totally wet, but I was so excited. I walked in, so now I have to go, go back into the building. For the, so I walk inside, I walk into the cell, and Panama is sitting over there. Panama is the, the guy that was with me. He thinks he's a foolish lame, but after, and he he uh, told me his mother was Jewish, could be, and uh, so he looks at me. He was one of the guys that were there and ran out because it's raining. I said, Panama, you know, you missed the the most amazing akafas in the world. So he looks at me, Rabbi, what's going on? See, he couldn't. He looked at me. I was, I was wet, muddy. I said, so I wanted to, I wanted to maintain that feeling of akafas I had in the sukkah. So what I did was, I said, you know, I think what goes on tonight in 770, and I started describing him, I in 770, he used to pass by over here in the parkway, so he knew what I was talking about from the outside at least. And I started dancing again, I had the Kofas And the, the cell was so small, you couldn't really dance around, I put a chair over there in, in the middle, in the middle of nowhere. It's in the middle because there's nothing on the right, nothing on the left. But the, so I, had, I, I, was, I was moving around the, 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 on the side, uh, a kafa one, a kafa two, and dancing and singing. I wanted to maintain the simcha. And finally, the, 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 finished, the second kafa we finished, and Panama was sitting on top watching his whole scene. And sadly, he couldn't join in the singing because he didn't know the songs. But then I finished, I hung up. So I, the next morning, I woke up, the pants were, were already dry. I kept the pants hanging there the whole year. Every time I saw the mud on the pants, Mamish reminded me of, of the Simcha state that I had. And this is another way I got through another year in a place called prison. So why, but we, we, say, we say, when you say that Taylor gives you the clarkite, when you say, when you, when you get together and you discuss an issue, whether it be children, whether, whether it be, whether it be uh, Shalom Bayez, whether children, whether it be business, whether it be anything you want to touch, it's all in Taylor. You have to know where to look, how to look, that's what, that's, this is the Indian, I, I understand, this is why I was outside to come tonight, because this is how it's supposed to work, that's, we're supposed to work, you get together, somebody teaches us how to, they are supposed to figure out, how do you take this lesson, and Taylor couldn't, maybe not talking about uh, a sukkah in a place called prison, but Taylor does talk to you about feelings, that you are yourself, you're not yourself, can you dance in the situation, I was, I was terribly disappointed, I was way looking forward for, for a moment in the sukkah, and maybe some it rain. But instead of, instead of saying, okay, forget about it, I took out the darkness and I turned it around. It gave me inspiration much for the whole year. My so, favorite story, I, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to draw attention to, one of the reasons I love this story is because it's a microcosm of how a yid has to deal with a problem. Um, we all have problems, you know, we all have challenges, whatever they are. And in this story, you, you, you might see a roadmap that it started out, you, you faced with a disappointment, you're faced with a terrible uh, trauma, problem, whatever it is, 
And the first step is the clarity of mind. Your heart is still not there, you're still very disappointed, but you, you have the intellectual clarity, the, you, know, you have the awareness, the, the knowledge of, how, of, of, of what's really going on or how it should really look I mean, at it. just got, got rejected from the, from the Supreme Court also. Right. No, but the, 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 you start off with the intellectual clarity, and then, you know, but, but really where, where people, our, our, our life is, we live with our heart, that's where we live, and so we want that heart, our heart to, be, to feel yes. you know, the, the, the Yeshua. And some people, the, you know, you start with the clarity, but, but I don't feel it. So they start to gribble and they try to find a way to open their heart. And why? Because if you want to dance, you have to be happy. So, so I have to make, if I, if I, I know I should be dancing. In order to dance, I need to be happy. So let me try to tinker with my heart somehow, do something. What am I supposed to do? And we don't really know how. And, and what you see from this story is that we get it backwards. Chazal tell us that, Achri HaMaisim Nemeshachem HaLevavos. So you start with the with the with the clarity of of Torah. You already once you already got the Chazal, once you already know what the Torah tells you, then do it. It's not just when you're happy you'll dance. When you'll dance, when you dance, you'll become happy. When you start acting on that clarity, then so so first you you recognize the truth. Then you started to dance, and as you started dancing, your heart started opening up, and and you reach the 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 the, the, the geula in that moment in that story. That's why I love that story. That's why I love that story. Not only the mice, super mice. Okay, so that's the. Um, yeah. The. On, on that note, we're talking about a place, a person who's put in an impossible situation. My family is in one place. I'm in a separate place. Besides the place that I was in, there was a place called prison, which in itself is a, is a devastating place. The whole place is designed to to make you feel uh, alone and uh, and uh, vulnerable and and uh, forgotten. But I have a blah 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 blah. It's it's a bad place. Make it a long story short. And if, if family's outside, so you can say, okay, David should put me in a matzev. But that is not like that because I'll give you, it says, a so person is not where he is physically, he is where he wants to be. That's what it says in Chassidus. Now take that, take that practically. That means I'm, I'm not the dafka where my, where my body is. I want to be with my family. So how can I be with my family on Shabbos, for example? Yeah? I brought some younger kids. My youngest kid then, when the film three started out, was four years old, pretty young. A daughter now now and now she's a column Africa, but then she was eight years old and nine years old and then had another boy twelve years old. How how do I how do I uh, uh, c c continue? Do I have to give up being a father? So as so I was looking for eight, I didn't and David I got I got I got a, 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 this idea, David she gave me this idea that uh, you know, if you can't be by the Shabbos table physically, maybe you can be by the Shabbos table with the Dvateda. So I learned during the week, I brought from learned anyways, but I learned things about the parsha, and I sent multiple emails every week. That's how I started to my family, for the younger kids, for the older kids, advatate on the parsha. Now the kids are getting it, my wife takes it, prints it out. And by the Shabbos table, the, the kids are, are, uh, are uh, 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 reading the, the advatate from the father. So what's happening? So first of all, every, every time I wrote advatate, I wrote advatate, it wasn't just a speech, it was a feeling what happened, what happened during the week. But I glad that that's how the saying, I, the first Shabbos I wrote over there, I wanted to say I'm in a place called prison, but, but, but I, didn't want to, I said I'm in prison. I didn't want to write I'm in prison. So I was, I was fighting, how do I say this? I, I'm here, but I'm not here. So I came up with this idea, I'm in a place called prison. I, I, I'm pushing words, I never want, people will ask me, so when did you come here? That's it, but when do you, other prisoners, when did you come? I said, I never came. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody comes to prison, here, check in, here's an American Express, two nights here, please. When I came, they brought me here. It, it, it sounds small, it sounds small, but every step of the way, you have to have a clutter cup, what's going on? I'm here against my will. I'm here because every student wants me here, and, and, I, and I can, the only every can free me. So these are, these are small, I never tried to say, people ask you, how long is your sentence? I said, I don't know, what do you don't know? I didn't want to give it any, any, any meaning. I've never said, to, never, the word never is a bad word, but I tried very hard not, not to say the word 27 years, because I, I really, really felt that my betochen, the any is betochen, in the tzara, they will help me out. So why am I saying 27? They will make it less. And Baruch Hashem, it was less. So these, this is the reality that a, a yid lives in. It's not that person learning. So the kids are so going back to the Shabbos table. These little kids are sitting, and they're seeing their fathers writing every week. So the first week, it looks like, okay, second week, third week, fourth week, five week, and then it continues. What happens? Over the years, this little boy walks into yeshiva, to his and tells his father, 
tells his teacher, I'm sorry, tells his teacher, you know, my tati loves to learn. How do you know his tati loves to learn? Because he saw, when he came visiting, I was talking to him about the Pasha, not the whole time, okay? we don't, but, but he, was, he saw me living with the, living with the Pasha, with, with him and learning, and he saw every week, I'm sending him to Vivitatus. Obviously, you don't send it that Out of all those pages, that it, there was, must have been 20, 30 pages every week, and there was like a paragraph and a half. I know because I used these, these emails to start to make the basis of the story. My father didn't keep a diary. But the, le- the emails he sent us, this, the, this happened, and they closed it down, and this person did that. And, and I, I wanted to go through and, and you know, extract as much you know, contemporary, contemporaneous uh, uh, stories and anecdotes to, to, to form the basis of the book. I lived through a lot of it, and I knew the, the general outlines. But I wanted to get some more stories. It was like 3% what was going on, and other, the other 29 and a half pages were all different. Yeah. So, so, he, so he tells me, he said, that's how I got the idea. His father was to learn. So what to do for him? What to do for him? If his father likes to learn, then he also wants to learn. So look, look at this. The father is uh, 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 what, 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 what they, in, in prison language, would be absentee father, which, which is not true in my case anyways. And, 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 and it's having an effect on the children. Why? Because the Abishta gave him, he dived to the Abishta and gave him an idea how he could still have a contact with his kids, how he could still be involved with the kids, how he could still show them wh- how to think. Um, this kid would pick up the phone. There's, there's a, there's one of the many, many tzaddikim that jumped in to help. And I'm sure everybody here, Davin for me, this gave me a lot of physics. So one of the guys was a, one, was a lawyer from California, no less, a guy in California, and he's worried about a Jew in New York. Yeah, obviously so. He dedicated four years, never charged a dime, and he worked very hard, and they just gave him a to to to, uh, to help uh, the, the case. He, pick, he calls on the house, and this little boy picked up the phone, and his mom made the guy who was taking Tati home was on the phone. Th- this was like a, this was, the, the children watch the, uh, the parents, how they act, what they think, how they do, and that becomes part of the way they think. So this is why it's so, this is why it's so important. I'm, I don't become speechy here. I, mean, I, I just want to say, I, I, I recognize this, this, this Indian, that if I can, uh, I can look at the world two ways. I can look at the world like a goy, and stuck in nature, and in nature I was in a very bad shape. Right or wrong, and the world so mean to me, and all the mice and read, you know, I used to go like this, like a fiddle, <laughs> start a song. Or, or I can rise above it, right? And not only figuratively, for real, because anything it says in Tate is for real. So, well, how do you do it? You find out, like, the, the, I, I want to say this, this is a story you've heard from me many times, but this is, this is, <coughs> Mamish, and every time you have. Of Nisoyen. Any soy you go through, I don't care which Nisoyen it is, if you look at it, I went through, I would say eight and a half, it was more, than, it's seven years of Norisville, but or, or the whole Maisa was over nine years, and in jail, of, I think almost not, in jail was eight and a half or nine prison time. It went through the, the so I, I, you can say that, first of all, I went through a very traumatic experiences, I, I was put that on top, and, but Baruch Hashem, I never felt traumatized. Why? This, this, this is what I want to share with everybody. Because, when it, these things happened, I chose to see the thing that's happening as something the Abish is doing. That's it. As not as a happenstance, not as the world doing it to me, the Abish is doing it, that's a Munab Shutta. And we all believe in the same thing, but instead of learning about Nasikha in a in a in a safer, I, this is the truth. This is the way you look at it. And 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 the same Tata that says that I'm supposed to accept whatever happened with uh, with uh, Av and at uh, say Gamzul Lutev tells me they have to have a talk and they wish to save me out of the Torah. So I went on that on that calf and th- and then and then nature means nothing. I heard a person I heard this many times and I learned many pages of this. They're ever saying a yid has nothing to do with nature. I mean, I don't know how many times have I say to to, to it gets into your head? And look, open up any sikh and put him. I just say uh, any sikh and put him. And he does do nothing to do with nature. This week, this week, the Bakas Chesha, just a, a quick Nakuda. And this is a lot of time misrepresented because it gives a, it gives a flip on you. A yid has to do mitzvahs in, in, in nature. And that's why they had to go inside the houses of the Egyptians and to find the, the treasures because they had a mitzvah. And the mitzvah had to be performed in nature. They had to go looking for the treasures in the house of the mitzvah. But what, how, was the yid able, how was he able to go into the house of the mitzvah? The Abish had to change nature. Make a market cheshach, right? And that's so. So, so this is this is a, a, a this is a foundational piece that's found at the end of a sicha, on the last page 
but it's it's life changing. That's like this: a yid has to work in nature, but the abish that changes nature, so it can work in nature. So whoever gave, whoever gave anybody an idea, the miracles can't happen. And this is the word when you speak in Yiddish. When you want what Abish wants, the world talks back to you. I went in in Yiddish. They talk back to you in Yiddish because I, I was in a, in, a, in a place the, the toughest places in prison with the toughest guys. I'm not, I'm not measuring up. You find me a tougher place, mask him. Okay, but there were, there were guys there that killed people for money. They were, they killed they 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 got angry and they shot people. I mean, that, so this is that type of people. You see them on one side of the street. You walk the other side. They settled problems with with. And they never touched me. I never got extorted. I never was told I must do something. If not, if not. Fakert. They looked at me with a, with a whole different eye. So we, we had this, we, and how did I get to here? How did I snap, I snap out of it? You heard this story many times. I want to show, focus two Nikudas. The first night they threw me into, into, into jail. <coughs> the guy wants to take away from me Yamaka and Sitsis. And I'm telling him I can't, I need my Yamaka and Sitsis. So what does David should do? David should make this guy get tough with me. And he tells me words I'll never forget. He looks me in the face and says to me, listen, buddy. We became very friendly very fast. I was I can never forget the moment. Buddy, what's that buddy me? Buddy. A lot of things are gonna change for you tonight. He's telling me up front. And this is exactly what I had to hear because I was in a cl- I was in a haze. Any person go, I don't care who he is, besides the rebbe, gets thrown to prison, he goes into haze. Any uh, any the, the signature of ending the soy and any problem is when you walk in and you suddenly feel overwhelmed and you just don't care, can't think clearly. That's exactly why I was. How did they just snap me out of it? But this guy, this buddy of mine, tells me uh, a lot of things gonna change for you. Now I'm trying to tell him I want to be a yid, and he's telling me we're gonna change you. Oh, really? So I have to wait a second. Shalom Atchi, you're not. There's not a problem with shackles and bodies here. This is a ma'aseh with a neshama, and I said that not, that not. And we all learn Tanya, Perik Yud Ches. When a yid realizes that the Bodei wants to change a person, what, what, does he, what does he do? He has to sudden, suddenly you feel a surge of energy you never knew you had. I didn't know I had. And I tell the guy, and this takes a lot of energy, and I'm, try, I'm just trying to share the story, not because to repeat a story, but this is the truth of who we are. We are hidden, and we, if we can tap into energy of Anishama, the suddenly everything switches. So what happened there? He's, I was physically in a very bad spot, but any, any account, take any problem. How did I get the energy to, to realize what I have to do? The first thing is, I'm not changing. That's the first thing. So this guy goes, gets a little bit, uh, he doesn't know how to deal with it. He slaps me, puts me in another cage, and he brings in his superior. Superior. What's a superior? He has an extra stripe on his shirt. That's all the superior. So the, the extra stripe guy comes in, and he tells me, well, he wants to know what's going on. So I tell him, and now I'm, behind, I'm having a conversation between bars. It's not a, good, not a good experience, let me tell you. You're talking to a guy. I try to alleviate it also, always with simcha. I'm t- looking at this guy, I'm fighting for my Yama consensus. I'm thinking to myself, one second, I'm trying to, I was trying to feel free. So who's really in prison, me or him? Because from my perspective, he's behind bars too. So <laughs> I, I promise, I, I'm not, I was thinking about it. I'm not, I'm not crazy, I knew the situation, but I was trying to, I was trying to make it, a, I'm looking at the guy, he's behind bars. Who's behind bars, me or him? So he tells me he's going to, so here's the second part, as I, and this is a key part. If I can get anything across tonight, this is in the code that, 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 that this mom has changed my story and put me on the right track. There's a third part, too, because I had to come, to, like Hetzel said, I had to come to Maise. I'm fighting my own he tells me, he'll, t- he'll ask a rabbi, good, ask a rabbi. Anybody knows, any rabbi knows a reform, Orthodox conservative, uh, this is a reform place up there in South Dakota. Yarmulke is a religious thing. America is a wonderful country. Medina Shal Chesed, wonderful people. And even in prison, they give you a Yarmulke. Gewaldig. So I'm going to get it. He comes back. And this guy comes in. He's reading a paper. He got an email back from this rabbi. And he tells me that you're in prison and you listen. And, and uh, they're the boss, these guards. And if they take a Yarmulke and sisters, you have to listen to them. And then he finishes off this, this moron. I mean, I'm sorry, this wise guy. He finishes off, din, if you learn Gemara, you appreciate this a lot. He says to me, dinner the machos dinner. Which means the law of the land is the law of the land, and it says in Gemara, it's not a joke. The law of the land is the law of the land. So this forced me right away. I'm a regular person, he's saying, law of the land, I have to listen to the God, the God wants to take my uncle and sisters, I have to do that? Oh, really? So, so suddenly I was, I, as a yid, I had to understand my matzav. What, what forced me? If, let's say this never would have happened. If they would have let me have a yamaka and sitters, the night would have passed through, I would have been in a haze. Who knows how I would have been able to get the clarity. Dafke the problem that I was in. 
And I, but you get together and you speak about problems that you're in and you try to figure out, so what does Ibsen want from us over here? Am I supposed to, uh, uh, what, what goodness can I get out of this? What's the Nisoyen all about? And then you'll figure it out. You'll see, you'll figure, your neighbors will help you. So here I was, and, and then and this guy's mutching me. He's telling me, you know what Dinah Chassidim means? It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a phrase, it's three words in Hebrew, in, uh, after Aramaic actually. The law of the land is law of the land. So I had to now reconcile the guy behind bars <laughs> telling me that I have to listen to him. But I have to listen to David now against this. So a story that I learned in yeshiva popped up to my mind. I never would have chapsech on the story, but I was forced to chapsech on the story. The Rebbe Yatz, as the Yitz Shvat coming up, the Rebbe Yatz was put into prison, and he wanted to kill him, Rahman al He got out of Shepalarika, and he got on the train station, and my father, Allah Shalom, says he remembers, he wasn't there, but he remembers that he was trying to describe me the screen as he was told as a young kid in Russia about the scene. The Rebbe came out, there was a few hundred chassidim that dared come to see off this guy who was going, this person who was being watched by the KGB. To, uh, to exile, and the Rebbe said, over, heroically, the Rebbe said, hey, you didn't have to know that the Neshama, the, only the body went into prison, uh, went into Golos, the Neshama never went to Golos. And therefore, when it comes to physical things, we have to listen to the, to the, to the, to the nation that we're in, but when it comes to spiritual things, the Neshama things, you have, they, they have no right, they have no right, I forget, they have to help you. That was because they were trying to stop Eden from keeping Shabbos, Achul. So what? So as I took that story and I thought to myself, "Oh, this is perfect for now. I'm, I'm, they want to put me in prison. I have to know that I only my body is in prison, not my neshama." And this is mamish. This is foundational stuff. We have to always remember, whichever matzav you are, there's a part of you that's not in prison. There's a part of you that's not in the problem. You know, we always talk about nefesh ruach neshama chayichida. I'm sure you 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 learned it along the way. There's a, there's a part of the neshama is called nefesh. The part of, what, what's this about? The neshama is not looking for extra social security numbers. What does he need five names for? <laughs> because every name is described in the neshama on a different level, and there's a level that's yichida that never gets involved with your problem. If you know that, then you know there's a part of you, not only the Avish is with you, there's a part of you that's also not in the problem. Hook into this energy, hook into this chais you have from your chida, and suddenly you can help, you have an energy you don't know you had before. You're not in prison. I, start, I actually told this guy the whole speech, eight minutes. He listened. I, I have to tell you something, it's, it's really a medinish al because this guy was standing there for eight, ten minutes and listening to my whole speech. I wasn't talking to him, I was talking to myself. I was starting to reconcile. You said, I'll tell you, when it comes to speeding, when it comes to paying taxes, when it comes to jaywalking, then you look and you find out what the, what the laws are the land on, you better not speed. And you better pay taxes. And you better do what it says. But when it comes to the Shoma things, like Yamaka and Sitsis, you got to give it to me. That clarity, and one more point. Did I, the, if, if, what, what is a, well, this is a very important point. I remember as a Bachar learning this, hearing this story. And I thought to myself, what are, you, what are you splitting hairs between the neshama and the body? Where's the neshama? You hope the neshama is connected to your body. It gets very troublesome when the neshama goes one way and the body goes the other way, right? So what do you mean the neshama is not in Golos? The, and only the, only the gufas in Golos. If the neshama is in the body, so you're also in Golos. So what's the Rebbe saying? The answer is, the answer is very simple. When you live with your neshama, the neshama picks up your body. Out of Golos. And if you look for the physical wants, the physical desires, the substance in the but the free part of you into your Golos, into your thing. So you have a choice. You have to take two pathways. This clarity, just to finish up this, this point, this clarity started from the beginning. I think it came in a very hard way. At the end of the whole story, they threw me into the South Africa Fire because I wouldn't walk around Yamaka and But But the clarity that I got, that I'm going through a matzav. I got to think like a yid, I got to handle like a yid, I have a neshama, it's not in Golos. If I live with my neshama, I'll feel free. That's it, that's the way I'm going to do it. It didn't always work out instantaneously, I'm always free, but it, it, was, a, it was the direction I went, and it worked out that every time, taking that process, applying this to my the situation that was there, I got respect from all the goyim, even the officers in, in, the, in the place. When, uh, just, uh, when they, they freed me, but they should freed me, one of, the, one of the guards overheard asking another guard, but one of the people still there, he, he, he shared this story with us. He said, one of the guards asked another guard, who is this Rabashkin the, the president just freed? Who is this guy? Some people knew me, and some people didn't know me. It was a big place over there. And this guard is trying to figure out if he, who's a guy that, who, like, no pictures of anybody that way. So he says to him, 
I, and I never, I never imagined they would describe me like this. <coughs> they described me, I thought they'd say the guy that was always serious uh, with his religion, I don't know what he would say. The guy who never got a shot, I never got a, I never got a write-up. When they wanted something that had nothing to do with you, I stand, sit, go, I listen. That's the, that's the law of the land. But it came to the Shama things, I had the clarity to know, know this is what I need. So the guy says to him, you know the guy, he was asking how to describe me, he says, you know the guy that was always happy? Now, I didn't walk around prison with a big smiley face, you know, those, uh, those, uh, those yellow things they have with a big smile. I, I actually davened every single day very seriously. I said the whole them every single day, and I asked the Abishta, please bring me home. Seriously, I got up, maybe cried sometimes. What do you mean I was happy? There's an inner happiness of freedom. The inner happiness of feeling free. The inner happiness when the shama glows, and even the guy saw it. That's my point. So, uh, so this is taking <coughs> everything we learned in, 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 in yeshiva or the classes, and push it, bringing it down, practically speaking, how do I take what I learned in yeshiva? Because every, every answer to your life is in Taita. You have a community. That's what community is about. You get together. Each one has its, each person has their specific challenge they're going through. The, 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 the purpose of friends are is to help the person to find the answer. I'll be tater, not I'll be tater. How does Taita illuminate and free the person from the problem? Yeah. Just, just that sounds like a speech. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just being around somebody that uh, that that's also on the right it has some clarity. It has. Uh, we're, we're sitting today in shul, and we've, we we sat down to fabring after davening. So uh, we're saying that when we, we daven, we daven because we we want we're we're trying to to generate some passion, some excitement about the Ebrister. And uh, it doesn't work for everybody. Some guys, some 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 weeks it works, some weeks it doesn't work. But among the minion, sorry, among the minion has got to be one guy who 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 hit it. So we sit around the table, you put a little lighter fluid, and then <laughs> hopefully the, the guy who's on fire will catch everybody else on fire. Just being around somebody else who's passionate, somebody else who's happy, someone else who's free, it's contagious. It, it, it helps you escape. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I wanted to say the, the, this vart about experiencing the trauma of, of, uh, of the, um, the experience and not being traumatized, it reminded me the very, very geschmack of vart. Um, we're, we're now talking about Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim and Moshe Rabbeinu's uh, mission and shlichus to, to, to free the Yidin. And there's an there's a anecdote, there's, a, there's, a, well, there's a, 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 a story, and a detail that happens very early on that is a tremendous, tremendous lesson and, and, sh and, and, and tells us about how a Yid should approach a problem. The, when the Ebrishter first uh, uh, recruited Moshe Rabbeinu, when, uh, when he told Moshe Rabbeinu he wants him to go, so there was a whole conversation, and, and Moshe Rabbeinu was reluctant. At some point in that conversation, the Ebrister told him to throw his stick on the ground, to throw his staff on the ground, and it turned into a snake. a snake, a venomous, poisonous snake. And then the Ebrister tells him, grab the snake by the tail. Moshe was afraid. The Moshe, Moshe ran, 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 ran from the snake. He grabbed the snake by the tail. Moshe grabbed the snake by the tail, and it turned into a staff in his hand. So when I was learning it, I I, uh, I don't know where I pick up this trivia from, but I happen to know that uh, the, the 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 advice, the the the, the handling, the recommendations. If you have to ever, you shouldn't touch a poisonous snake. If you ever have to, the best place to hold is it right behind the head, because if the it, the whole body can twist, if you grab it by the tail, it can turn around and bite you. So so well, first of all, why is the Abishter, why is the Torah telling us at all? how Moshe should grab the snake. Why did the Abishter care where he should grab the snake? And if he's going to grab the snake, why shouldn't he grab the snake? By the head. By the head, right behind the head. That's, that's the safest place to grab the snake. I was wrong. I mean, he did run. He ran. <laughs> anyway, so, so um, it occurred to me that there's a tremendous lesson over here. The world, people, if, if you, you could think of a, a trauma or of challenges in life, it's like a snake. And either it bit you or it's going to bite you. You're, you're, you're dealing with a snake. A venomous one. A venomous snake. <laughs> yeah, something that could put uh, that could put that could poison you. And the world, or instinctively, or logically, or or socially, the the advice there's going to be some advice about how best to handle the snake. You're going to go to somebody. You'll ask somebody, or you'll think about something yourself. You'll you'll figure out a way to handle the snake. And the way you're going to think to handle the snake is going to be something along the lines of grabbing the snake behind the head. 
But the problem with that is that best case scenario, if you do it right and everything goes well, you neutralize the snake, but you're still holding a poisonous snake. But then the Torah also tells you, the Abraster comes to you and tells you how to grab the snake. And very often, I, you could say always really, it's exactly the opposite of what you would have done otherwise. They say chassidim in Russia when they weren't, didn't have access, they weren't able to ask the Rebbe, so they would ask somebody who represented the other uh, perspective, and then they would do fakert. Because das balabatim hebech das teira. There are certain perspectives that are just diametrically opposite. It, it, it's not a malicious thing. It's just they, they see everything exactly backwards. So if you ask them, and you can do exactly the opposite. The Torah, the way Torah looks at it, is exactly the opposite. Not look at it. No. Instead, I don't mean look at it. <laughs> instead of the instead Torah of wants building, you to, don't change it. Doesn't want you just neutralize instead it. Instead of right, but in, instead of looking at it like elevating, you, you, you have a, you have a problem. Instead of bolstering the ego, the Torah is telling you bittel. You know, it's it's it it because it because it because the world is is sees it. The world presents itself exactly the opposite of what it is, and the mile of doing it the way the Torah suggests. First of all, the Torah tells you how to grab every single snake, no matter what kind of problem it is, what kind of sort it is. If you if you look at it the way the Torah tells you, you grab hold of it the way the Torah will tell you, and it will transform into a staff. When you a staff. It's not just a neutralized snake anymore. Now it's a staff. A staff is a symbol of, a, 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 first of all, it's a source of support. You could lean on a staff. It's a sign of, of, of malucha. It's a sign of, of, of control. A, a control, of dominance. And, and, and that's the difference. That's the difference between, between approaching the, the, the world from the world's perspective, you know, accepting the world's assumptions and sort of trying to go from there. Best case scenario, you end up with a neutralized snake. We're going to it like a yid where... Not only does, the, does this trauma or this trouble become neutralized, it becomes a source of strength. Either the thing itself becomes a source of strength, or the, the, the experience, having experienced it, leaves you a better person, a different person, who, who, is, who is holding now a staff. That, 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 that incident becomes a source of, of, of support and strength for you. And, and I think that's what you're describing when you talk about exactly. this, this guy uh, yelling at you. So it was a traumatic thing. The, the, the way that he attacked you and he was aggressive about it, it was a snake. It was. It was. It could have been a source of. It could have. It could have made you bitter. It could have created sadness or or despair or whatever. And and not only not only are you, did you find a way to don't let it affect you. Who cares what he thinks? Whatever advice we would normally come up with our own brilliant chachma. You looked at it the way that the way that Abrister says that that and you and and if now you look back at that snake and you say that snake was for me a staff that snake that moment that that trouble was okay. something that i leaned on that supported me that gave me a, a superiority over my circumstances and and that's something that, that we all need so, in our own lives so let me give you an example for that you say betachon if people say what's betachon a thing good will be good right so right away you say betachon a thing good will be good so what, what's the correlation you draw a line there's another thing it's called positive thinking Positive thinking, think positively, but it's not true because even though Betochen has an element of their positive thinking, Betochen is way beyond positive thinking. Betochen is actually a koyach, and this is as Sfarim, the Rebbe repeated it all the time. Betochen itself is the way you get your Yeshua. So it's not that you to think positive from today till tomorrow. Why should it, why should things change? It's a tool at best. Positive thinking is if you want to sleep at night and you don't want to worry, think positively. It doesn't, doesn't change the worry. You, sleep, you wake up with the same problem. All right? So if you want to change the problem, you want to t change the snake, do, using the Marshall he's talking about, I, I think it's an amazing Marshall over there. Do, don't hop it by the head the way you think I own Seichel. Do what Abishta wants. When you do what Abishta wants, then it does make a difference where you have it, the, the tail, the middle, the head. As long as you do the the wants, then, the, then you'll change the danger to become actually friendly to you. So what is betachen? Betachen means the reason why you're thinking positively is because you're, because you're having betachen, the Ebishter, that will help you out of the tzara. Why would the Ebishter help you out of the tzara? Because the Ebishter tells you how betachen. What is betachen? Betachen means uh, it, it's something like this. If you learn inside, it betachen, says the same way you want Hashem to be masking to what you want Him to do, because really everything Hashem does is good. That's a Muna, right? So why you want to have it your way? Because you want to have a, a good that you can see is good. You don't have just a good that you know is good. You want to have a good that you can, you can, you can, you can see and feel and know it's good. You want to have nachs from the kids. You have the parasha you want. You want the shidduch you want. You want to have a good that's b'teva and nigla. So how do you get it? When you, so he says, <coughs> when you do what the Abishter wants, 
then they will do what you want. But you realize there's no other kayak in the world to be afraid of. And you give yourself over to the Abish, the meaning you do, you do, you're living like a yid. Then the Abish that works, he says in the tale, he works midi kayak and And that, then the Abish that changes, the Abish says, is, is, does whatever he wants. And he can change this very situation he made. So Betochen turns out to be <coughs> actually a kayak to change the matzav. So this is, this is the Nakuda, if you're talking about the, the, the flow, when you talk about living within the Shama, what does it mean? Do, do, act. I, I say the story many times. I'm going to say it again. I, I'm sorry you heard it from. But you have to have the story about Mark many times. I had a mitzvah with the kids, and I went through with the kid, raising kids in prison. I, not in prison. As I'm going to a place called prison, my, children, my wife is a langazunt. She was had the job of raising them. And and so my little interaction with them was when they saw me at the most weakest moment, dressed like a clown. I mean, really, I never thought of it that way. But it's, if, but, it's, but it's true, they put you on the uh, uniform that makes you look very uniformly stupid, but uh, they don't give you a normal thing. They give you a stupid khaki look, colored uh, looking clothes and, and, and you can, anyways, our place it was orange. For the people that can't see well, they see put orange, but, or stripes. But, but the, the, the good thing is the kids had to come over there and, uh, and Baruch Hashem, we had always laughter, always simcha, always in the betachen. So that was, that, was, that was good. And then, so this particular story happened, as I say briefly, but you see, you can talk to a child, to yourself, and to a child also, with, 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 like a yid. There was a machine over there that sold ice cream. And this machine had ice cream in there that was hall of, hall of Akamo. No, no hechsher at all, or had a hechsher with a little D next to it. D stands for danger, if you didn't know, or, or disaster. Or, or don't eat it. D for don't eat it. <laughs> don't do it. Anyway, so he, we, he didn't have to we, we know we don't need to have Yisrael. This is key important because, talk about the head. Rationally speaking, why shouldn't I enjoy an ice cream with my kid? Let's enjoy something together. Rationally speaking, this child is going through a very hard time in his life. Why don't you want to make him feel good? Let him have an ice cream. Oh, come on. So it's not the best hechsher, but it's our rabbis that say it's okay. But the fact of the life is like this. And in order, for, we talked about until now, that you have to, if you live with your neshama, you're free. If you access the kayak of your neshama, you don't only have a tool, you have power to overcome the, 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 the snake that in, in your life. You can change the snake from something that can hurt you to, look at this, eight and a half years and you can turn it into a, a, a time of, of inspiration. So, not when I was in there, I'm talking about Baruch Mount. But after it's over, you can see that it turns into a staff. <coughs> so how do you get to the, so one of the things as, as, as important as it is to bolster the neshama through learning and through uh, meeting and to get to the community, and if you can't find it, have your friend help you find it, to explain it, to be there with you along, along the way, you have to have a healthy neshama. If your neshama is constantly going to be uh, uh, knocked down, if you eat food that's not kosher, or not pro properly kosher food, what it does is it insulates the sensitivity of the neshama to those, it desensitizes the neshama to holy things, to the feelings of Mother Betachem, which is so crucial. I clearly, my kids went through this trauma that I went through, clearly with the strength of the neshama. Where did it come from? If they would be desensitized, then they would be, and Baruch Hashem, they never went to any professionals, the had to snake, never had to take any uh, tranquilizers and, and stuff like that, and on medicine. I'm, I'm just saying this is maybe private stuff, but I'm trying to say this because I want to show you, you can go through and, and with, with the Mundi Betochen, you can get it done. How, but I you, you have to have healthy neshama, and, I, and, and you know clearly that eating food that's not properly kosher can interfere. So to, if you want the kid to be happy, don't give him the ice cream. Punk Fakarit. Don't grab the, the snake by the head. Because even for the moment you think you, you, you immobilize the head, the snake, it's still, you have a snake in your hand. And tomorrow maybe you'll be too weak to hold the head and it'll jump out and hop your bite. You want, you want to turn the snake into a stick. So they have to do what they wish to want. So this was how it worked. The guy told us he's going to get a halfway storm ice cream. And they, they took months and months. The violet, they wish to help. So I always say the word they wish to help. So having the soyan, how bad it looks at the moment, it's really... It's really every Nisoyen that Hashem gives you, 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 you. I heard from the Rebbe. You always dive an altivanal day Nisoyen, but if it's, you get the Nisoyen, do it like a yid. 
We say al tavenu lelo de nisoyin velelo de bizoyin. So the simple understanding is that you shouldn't. If we if we do have a nisoyin, we shouldn't yeah, suffer right. a bizoyin. But another very smart way of reading it yeah, is lelo de bizoyin. Yeah, the breath is that uh, is that the Ebrister tests people that that have strength to to withstand it and that can grow from the experience. If a person finds that he's not getting any nisyonis, it's a shtickle bizayin. Yeah, you, you don't trust me. You don't trust me to get the test. He's so me. weak. He has no test at all. You're, you're yeah. giving me easy. You're giving me the easy path because you don't trust me to. to so to finish the story like this, the, the guy walks into the, the guy walks in. He buys two ice creams for him and his friend, and they're eating ice cream. That's that's clearly dangerous for 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 Jewish health. And my kid sees this 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 thing happening, and he and he tells me that he was convinced they brought Chol Yisrael. And uh, he starts kvetching as a, a kid's can kvetch. And he makes me meshuga, and I try to talk to his rational side. I try to explain to him that if you keep on kvetching, the God said, he's going to kick me out. Then he keeps on kvetching right there. So I try to bribe him. I tell him, you're going to get uh, uh, one ice cream, two ice creams, three ice creams. I, I brought up the 10 ice creams. I, I, later, they say, wait an hour, and mom will go take you home to Monty, and there she'll buy 10 ice creams. You can't even eat 10 ice creams in one go. Try it. You can't. So she's buying ice cream for today and for tomorrow. So what's the problem? One hour? He got this thing in his head that's called the Yates Sahara. That's another, another discussion also. Everybody, we always got, we got into this groove. If you got an idea, it's an idea that I have to deal with. Some ideas come from Kedusha, some ideas come from Tumor, clearly. And if an idea comes from Tumor, it clearly has to, be, has to be discarded. They can't be dealt with in the same way. So this kid was adamant. He saw that he's getting his way. And the guard calls me a second time, tells me, if you don't get him quiet, I'm throwing you out. I didn't want to get thrown out. I wanted to be with him. And nothing was, I couldn't get, the, I couldn't get across. I felt bad for him, actually. This poor kid is here, he's tormenting him. Go home, and get ice cream. I tried one last ditch effort. I thought to myself, I put my hands in my hand. I dive into the like, how do you? So I thought to myself, why am I talking to his, to his brains? Why am I putting to his seichel? As much as an eight-year-old has, they can understand. Why am I appealing to his, to his desire to have more? Ten ice creams. Why did I talk to his neshama? So, how do I talk to myself? I, I will overcome something. How do I talk to myself? Talk to him? So I came up with this idea, and this happened pretty quick. I said to him, you know, you have two, you have two choices here. Choice number one is you can have ice cream right now. He looks at me, he wasn't sure where I'm coming with this. I said, you'll be happy, right? Because you're hot, you can't take it. You'll be happy, you have ice cream right now, but the still won't be happy. Let us think it for a second. The second choice you have is you can wait an hour, and then you'll have ice cream, and then you'll be happy, and they'll still be happy. Which one do you want? I watched this little kid's face. I'll never, there's a moment in life you don't forget. Because they're instructive, and they're because I was waiting, I was hoping what he's going to say, for more than one reason. And I never tried this in my life, so, so direct. And the kid looks, and he's trying to figure it out, and suddenly you see on the face it clicked, and he stopped talking about ice cream. How crazy he was for 20, 30 minutes, a long time. He was making me crazy. The God called me over twice, warned me. He couldn't get it off his thing. He met them all the hairs that he can do something that will make him only happy, not the Abish though. He could do something that will make the Abish happy. What's the problem? He stopped talking about ice cream. And not only he stopped talking about ice cream, he actually changed the conversation for me. We start talking about what's happening next week. Off the table. What did it teach me? It taught me two things. First of all, what 10 ice creams couldn't do for a child, knowing the Abish is happy, did it for him. Try it. Talk. I had a mice. I want to, I, I, I'm sorry, how much time you have over here? Time flies by more than you imagine. I was, I was um, to, to, let me just say, there were two lessons. Lesson number one was that knowing the Abish is happy what you're doing, think about it. Let it sink in. I have a choice to do something where only I'll be happy. But I have a choice to do something in a way that Abish will also be happy. And I bet you, and I guarantee you, if you think in those terms, every year wants to do what Abish wants, even a child eight years old, going through trauma for 20 minutes for ice cream, he, li he let it go. He let it go. And the kid that went through a, a Gehenim, this kid was eight, four years old when they pulled me out of, out of jail. And he wanted ice cream badly, but he hapsech. He waited an hour for Abish to be happy, no problem. Nobody turned on the air conditioner, no air conditioner they had to put on. The same hot day. The second thing is even more important. I think I'll have to say a lot later. A yid cannot be happy. Your children cannot be happy. Because the Yiddish kids, if the Abish is not happy. Why? 
Because every year there's a chalik and a kind of malamambish. It's simple. It's, it's, it's the simplicity of it and the clarity of it. it all, all it takes is what the guys are trying to say with the story. Take the idea and let it get into your heart. You can't be, a yid cannot be happy if Davish is not happy because a yid and Davish is one. It's not as you're here and Davish is there. You, you think you can, a person can think that if he gets into his child in a way that Abish won't be happy, somehow he'll get brownie points and the child will be happy with that. It can't work. Well, it physically can't work. It's impossible to work because if you understand who your child is, he can't take it. It's like giving sugar to a diabetic. I mean, I don't have to say it. I'm one of the sons. I'm, because it's even for a second, it tastes good and sweet. It 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 it, 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 it later has a, a, a negative effect on the person because he says he doesn't The more we understand, this is this is mamish the nakuda. I was I was I was on a, I was on the on the show. They started out this 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 this, um, this radio podcast. I don't know what they call it today. There's a, on, on the and the, the first during Corona, the Chinese uh, virus over there. It started out and they wanted me to get on over there the first summer. The Corona got on the Talking about Abunim Metachem. I was on there like four hours. We're talking, and I noticed slowly, slowly the the show moving away from having Rabbonim and and uh, uh, and and Eden on the show that talked about Taylor to to those who talk about uh, the 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 human methods how to how to do it. He invited me last last time to come again on the show with uh, Rabbi Pinchas Lipshitz at Tzadik Ayid in Lakewood. He runs the Ated. And he, Mamish, put everything online to help a, a yid, a Lubavitcher. And he, Mamish, but everything came out of the Fakat, to him, Achtas is the most important thing. So he went, and the, and, and the, came out of So we were on the show, and we were talking about Achtas Yisro, and Achtas Yisro. And then we had some calls coming in. And I, I don't remember how the whole conversation went. And one person called in, got the boy I knew from Postful, we had a long discussion with him about, Another person called in, I think it was a guy, and he tells me a story, and it hit me. I said, you know, you have a Jewish problem, and you're trying to fix it in a Goyish way. It doesn't work. I was trying to be, I was trying to say it in a way without getting, because that show particularly likes to have uh, Aristotle guys on there. So I didn't want to get in with it. So I, I, uh, I, I said it like that way. I come home, I got an email from, from, uh, from this, uh, from a woman, she t- she watched the show, and she needs to call me. So I, I give her the number. She called me up, and she tells me like this: She went, she was from California, and whatever she learned in school, she went to school a lot of years, and she feels to- her and her friends are going through hardships in life as everybody today is, and she feels totally disconnected with Yiddishkeit, and that thing that I said about she ad- she agrees, she agrees with the idea that if you have a Jewish problem, you have to find it in Taylor, but there's nobody to talk to. If you have money, you're a therapist. If you have money, you're stuck. That was her story. So I, I felt challenged. I said, you know what? Let's, let's uh, make a class for women. So I say, he says, no, you can't, you can't teach from a book. Because you guys, when you have a clear head, you can learn from a book. We wanna, I need to hear things like they talk. What, what the issue is, how do you deal with it, step one, step two. Step two. So I said, let's do it. I never did it before my life. Let's do it. And we started... Uh, we started uh, a, a woman's class, Kraina Hara, now is over 200 women a week. When three different showed him, I don't know how many, I'm, not, I'm very big with this technology thing, so I don't know there, but, but in person. And, and, um, and the name of the, of the show, the name of the class is Heal the Heart with the Munda Betachon. Why am I telling you this story? Because every time we go to this class and the people here, what am I telling them? I'm telling them, you have to know you have a neshama, you have to know you have a yitzhah, you have to know you have self-esteem comes from who you are. I'm telling them things that they learned in yeshiva. But I'm bringing it to the forefront. I'm bringing it in words that they can understand. I'm telling you about emunah, about betochen. And, and most important, it's heal the heart, not heal the mind. If you learn Tanya, it says clearly, the mind is the yitzhah the, the Jewish mind has no problem. The eight of tevis in the mind. When you learn, you're activating, you're seeing the world as you in your mind. What's supposed to happen is you're supposed to, from the mind, it's supposed to be mer shalt al alev. You also have a yitzhahara. resides in the heart, and the heart then s- signals to the mind to, 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 to do what it does. But the point is, I say, life-changing. People, 
this is the way we have to we have to get together. We have to talk like Eden. We have to talk words of Yiddishkeit because there's nothing. The Abish creates the whole world with Taylor. The Abish creates the whole world for you. There was one one of the things I heard this actually from Rabbi Banas Friedman. Rabbi Banas from Minnesota. I was a few years ne- a neighbor of him, and a great time we had together. And once he said he said this in a, in a way in English that, uh, that he expressed himself so beautifully. He says, um, "How did he go in, in Russia go through all the all the tzaddis?" Against Stalin, like and all the all the all the all the all the gzeres. because a yid knows that the Abishta runs the world, so the world can never really stand against a yid who wants to do tater. And they said it in English, I know, I, I learned it, but he said it in a way I can relate to. And that's what it was: eight and a half years in jail with guards, with with all these courts and the, whatever. What do you want? You know, I never put a name. If you read the book, I never. Gatzel had all the names in there. And then I called him up and I said to him, Gatsby, we got to take all the names out. I thought the delete, control the delete. As I said, one minute. One minute. <laughs> it took him two weeks to figure out that he wants to do it even. He had a ganze sheet to have. If the pair, we got all the names out. Why, why the old names out? I wanted to stay focused. Whatever's going on has come from Debishter. Every inch is in Tater. Every inch is in Tater. And, 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 and if you take the Tater approach, you'll take the, the snake, the problem you have, in any, in any area you want, and you'll turn it into the way you, uh, you do want to have nachas and have only good. And if you take another way, you may immobilize a snake for a minute, but you'll still be holding a snake that can bite you tomorrow. So this is, this is really the inside story, if you will, of the Gansa Mahalach. I always felt that, these, that whatever it is, if I want to do a mitzvah, they can't stand against it. Not because I'm strong. They can't stand against it because the Abish creates it. Every second, the Abish creates the world. I got a problem with a child. If I talk to the child like a yid, the Abish is going to create the matzav and take away the Yitzhar and he'll, and he'll be happy. Okay, okay, so that's the story. Inside story. How, 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 do you, how do you finish up? I finish up with a, with a few. There's one, one young man, there's a few, just a few success stories on this, on this note. I, there's a young, a young man that came to me and he must learn, which I've talking, he was going through a very hard time. I said, I have no time. Come to the shi. He says, he has to learn. And he happens to be somebody who can learn very well. He says, I come. He comes to my house for a few weeks. One day after one day, two days, three. He's coming and learning. And he tells me, since he started learning, things started getting better. For him, I can see on his face, he really eased up. And one day, I was sharing with him one of these classes that I gave in the Hill of the Heart. So he got, he, got, he, got, he got intrigued by the whole Mahalach. And he says to me, you know, I got a son. And he, he has a few boys, Baruch Hashem, but this, this particular son is giving him a hard time. And um, he, sta- he, he, doesn't get, he doesn't get up in the morning. And he says, this is very, very unusual. Okay, kids doesn't get up in the morning, and he doesn't want to go to school. <laughs> this is really, it's really, I mean, when we were kids, we always want to go to school. And we always got up in the morning and never gave any problems. And it, it, he writes, his father is very down. He's like, he's, so he went to speak to his rov. How do you deal with a kid that doesn't want to go to school? So I pill employ him. So the Rav listens to him and says to him, you know, this is a behavioral issue. You have to go see Aristotle. So I, I, the reason I say Aristotle is because I thought we won the war against the Greeks in Hanukkah. I don't know how I got, got back in. But, but besides, I, I have to go see Aristotle. So, so, so I, say to, I was shocked he even said it to me because I thought we had a stickle rapport. <coughs> we're always learning. It was this, not, not very, very little uh, yentiving with this guy. So I say to him, really? I don't want to mix in somebody else's business as a kid. I don't know. What do I know? So I say delicately, I say, so, so what's Aristotle going to tell him? I'm going to tell him. So he says, um, I guess the rabbi, what's Aristotle going to tell him? So I, he says, I don't know. <laughs> but he says, Aristotle happens to be Yiddish I don't know how that works. And so anyway, so I said, why don't you just tell the kid what says in Shulchan Aruch? First, you get up in the morning, 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 when you learn Tehri, you connect to the Ebi Shta, talk to him, it is the Shamba. I get a text, this is right before, I got a text from this guy, I, by mistake, I, I, I deleted it, I have a very fancy form, but, but I, I got a text from this guy, he says, I got to share with you a Nachas note, this didn't take much longer, he sent me a Nachas note, and he, it, this, he spoke to the kid, and he says, he got a, he got a letter from the kid one night, and I read this out, I was, in, I was uh, in, in, um, in Florida in, uh, by Rabbi Marlowe. 
So I, I took it out. I left a little. He was, he was listening to it. So I, I read that. I didn't want to read his name because I didn't want to give it away. So I read it. It says, Dear Tati, please wake me up 7 o'clock. I want to love with you 7.15. And then the last word on the note was the love and his name. So I, I stopped there. I was, I was afraid I was doing what I was doing. He says, why don't you finish the most important word in the whole letter? <laughs> so what was that? Learn? No. No, love. <laughs> he was obviously giving his father a run. I'm a father also. I know what it feels like. And, 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 and he was talking. And the fact that this child told to uh, finish off his letter with love meant the, 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 world, the, the world to him. Where did it also all come from? It came from talking to the kid via Yid. First, that's, 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 that's how it came. So this is the, this is the, this is the reality. Bereshit's brother, the Kippah Shemayim Vesaras, the Abraham created the world for Yudin and for Teira. The world, the light in the world, and the darkness in the world, everything in the world is from Teira. So, so if you want to understand how to fix something in the world, find it in Teira. Find it's there. Let's, let's, let's reconnect. Reconnect to ourselves in Taylor. Let's realize, I realize right away, I'm in a place called prison, not because of the judge. The, the lawyers who tried to wanted to say, you know, if you would have gotten a different judge and they gave me names, he would never do something like that. I said, what I, what I know. Uh, uh, another prosecutor, does it really make a difference who the judge was? Does it really, once something happened, that's exactly the way it's supposed to happen. That's a Muna. Once something happened, you're supposed to accept it. I to want my life to be like this. I had to marry the same guy, the same, the same, whatever I had to marry. I had to have these kids and my kids. This is the challenge Hashem has given me, not to break me. A challenge is made for you to hop. They wish to want something here. They wish to want you to overcome the darkness. They wish to want you to turn the snake into a staff. They wish to take a, a snake and not just immobilize the snake. Anybody can do that. I was in a place called prison. You hear these, these guys, they had 30, 40 Muslims over there. They start talking their talk. You think you're Tzadik Umar Salem out there, you know. Their belief in who you know what, and they start talking. And one time it hit me. They're talking, what am I different than them? The difference is, because they're talking and I'm believing. <laughs> That's the difference. They're saying all the right things, but they never hit the heart. It never got down to where they're acting on it. They are living it. They're saying that, but they don't believe what they're saying. They're saying that that's part of the thing. We have to go from learning. I, th I think this is what's here tonight. We, you have to go from the learning part. We learned enough, a lot. I said, enough is not the right word. We learned a lot. The idea of getting together is taking that learning, and as the woman told me, not, don't, not to disconnect, take everything we learn and connect to it. How does... How does uh, you you go through? Okay, I gotta, I'm sorry, keeping one more thing. I'm off the stage. In, 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 it says like this. This is, it says a child will go through. You wrap your head around this. I just want to leave you a thought like this. It's, this is it's straight out of the Chavis of Avos. He writes like this. It's addition. A child will go through sicknesses. You know, before COVID, there was many sicknesses the children went through. With COVID, there's no more sicknesses. Only COVID. So, so, so this is a. He said, a child goes sicknesses, and a child will go through a painful mikrim. And the reason that happens, he's talking about all the goodness Hashem does in the world, and he says over there, the reason is exactly what we're talking about tonight. So the child learns the true nature of the world. That there's bad in the world. There's bacteria in the world. In Nafshi, it's a hot in the world. If a child, he says, if a child would grow up and he would only have it good, never experience a sickness, if he would never experience a painful event, he'd think the world's a fairy tale and he'd, he'd become a behemoth just for enjoyment. So if you'd start looking at a painful experience as a yid, the same experience, a bully is in your class and the bully is making, the, is, is, is making you uh, the, the, the miserable or somebody acted mean to you, why don't you look at it as a lesson that uh, this is what it looks like when you don't listen to the Torah, like that bully. You become mean, you become bad, something you want to stay away from. You don't have to be traumatized by the event, you can learn from it. You, these are events you're supposed to learn to make you stronger and better, and, 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 and to see what a person looks like when the guards be, I think it's very simple. I, a lot of times I went through this Gehenna of prison, when the guards were mamish abusive to me, instead of feeling victimized, I just felt, no, now I see what it says in Pekal of Tanya, that, 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 that's Gimbal Clips at the Is this what they look like? 
So I, t I took an event that happened that would, would be uh, in Gersha terms one way, and I turned it into a lesson. And that's what it means to turn darkness into light. If you bench everybody, you, you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to go to any bad experiences. You have only good Tevni uh, Nigla. But uh, like the Rebbe says, we do, when the sign does hit, act, do it like a Yid. That was the purpose of it. If you have some, and then when you do like a Yid, they disappear. It disappears. I could walk everybody. I could bench the walk.